Well, Noir of Ember continues, and I'm continuing to seek out old crime noir classics this month. And for today's review, we're going to be looking at the movie Whistle Stop from 1946, starring George Raft and the gorgeous Ava Gardner. Well, the film opens up with Ava Gardner's character, Mary, returning by train back to this little small town and heading home. Once there, she has coffee with Molly, played by actress Florence Bates, and she says that, you know, she's back from Chicago because she needs some money. Well, we're not sure what the deal is, though, because here she is dressed in mink with a fancy gold cigarette case. So, what's the deal? Molly reveals to her that Kenny still lives there, but he's probably out working on a big deal. And then we cut to Kenny, who is out playing cards. I <laughs> get it, big deal. Uh, Kenny is played here by George Raft, who is an excellent actor I've seen in several other films on this channel, including Invisible Stripes and They Drive By Night. He's a great actor. I just enjoy him in films like this. So they're playing cards together, and they start talking about the character Mary. It sounds like he and Mary used to be a romantic item long ago, but invariably it leads to a fight, and one of the players calms him down, you know, with, forget it, Kenny, she's no good for you, you know, that type of stuff. Well, the straight-laced character, Lou Lentz, shows up with his well-trimmed mustache and a I'm-better-than-you demeanor. And he's played here by Tom Conway. I've only seen him once previously in the old classic Bride of the Gorilla. So his character is sort of the big boss guy, and he orders the fellas to kind of just clear out, go clean up the bar and stuff. Well, Kenny heads home, it's morning at this point, and he finds out that Mary is there. And he's thrilled to see her, but then starts getting uppity about seeing her fancy fur coat and stuff and asks why she's back and where did she get all that rich stuff and so on. And dude, come on, it's Ava Gardner. Why are you acting like this? But they end their squabble with a big kiss and a crescendo of music from Dmitry Tiomkin. Cut to a dinner scene where everyone is sitting around laughing. Kenny, Mary, and Molly are all there along with Molly's daughter, Josie, played by Janet Nye. Then the character Ernie shows up, played by Charles Drake, who I just caught recently as a bad guy in the film Tarzan's Magic Fountain. He was also in the film Conflict with Bogart. But here he's not a bad guy, he's just a lovable goofball having a big serving of dinner. But dinner is soon interrupted as a massive bouquet of flowers arrives. It's for Mary from that Lou Lentz character. Hmm. Kenny seems not too pleased. And dinner breaks down into a big yelling contest of people complaining about Kenny and his gambling. What a swell place this is. Well, Kenny and Mary, they head to town to go to a club, one that is run by Lou, apparently. Mary thanks him for the flowers while Kenny, well, as you can guess, goes to the bar for a drink. The waitress Fran, played by actress Georgia Curtwright, sees him and she was apparently a former flame of Kenny long ago, but she seems unhappy to talk with him here. Mary stops at the bar and says hello to Gitlo, played by actor Victor McLagan. He's this really big, cool actor. He was in Gunga Dean. I really like this guy. And he's going to come into this film in a pretty big role pretty soon. Well, there's a brief dialogue with Kenny and Lou. And before you know it, we go to a flashback where we see Kenny and Lou beating each other up. Mary can't take it and she leaves. End of the flashback. <laughs> Kenny splits and heads over to the train station to help his friend run things over there and to man the telegraph machine. Man, I love these old films. It's great. He covers for his friend who has a nasty cough and he leaves. And when does Kenny sleep? Well, whatever. The character Gitlo shows up and wants to just chill out with Kenny and play some cards. You know, he laments how he doesn't like his job at the hotel. He's always being watched by that Lou character. But as Kenny listens quietly, Gitlo runs down this scheme to basically kill off Lou and steal the proceeds from Lou's annual fare. Mm. And Kenny just listens quietly, kind of contemplating it all. Back at home, Kenny and Mary have a quiet talk on the porch about Gitlo and Lou and everything going on. And he tries to plant a kiss, but... She pulls away. You're hurting everyone, Kenny. Well, yeah. He's the protagonist of a crime noir film. They usually do that type of thing. So we cut to... <laughs> Anyhow, Kenny and Mary are at the fair, and they go dancing. 
Fran spots him and angrily tells him not to come crawling back to her again when Mary leaves him again. And man, that laughing carnival clown thing is just freaky. Kenny's scheme is interrupted, though, when Mary, suspecting that he's up to something criminal with that Gitlo character, stops him and, after giving him a kiss, calls him out on the fact that he's carrying a gun with him. Well, Kenny was figured out. He goes back home dejected and squabbles with the family at the table because, yeah, this film seems to be about those key themes of drinking, smoking, and family arguments. Kenny goes off to visit Fran at the hospital. She was injured in a dancing accident at the fair. Come on, don't underestimate the seriousness of county fair dancing accidents. It happens. Well, they have a sad conversation that turns into her accusingly saying, how does it feel to love someone who doesn't give a darn about you? And yes, she really does say, doesn't give a darn. I love these old movies. She yells at him to leave and he goes, her words, echoing in his head, crime noir style. Well, after a few drinks, he goes off to Lou's club and gets into a fight with him. But shortly after, during the day of the wedding of Ernie and Florence, Lou sends a message through Gitlow to bring Kenny over. He wants to shake hands with him and make peace and be his buddy. Okay, it's a little weird. So they go off to his office, but oh no, they discover that Lou is laying dead on the ground with Gitlow's gun. Uh-oh. So Kenny and Gitlow, they flee. The police are chasing him. Kenny gets shot in the arm. And the two of them go into hiding, eventually hitching a ride on the eastbound freight. They wind up in Detroit, I think, and they stay with Estelle, Carmel Myers. Kenny's in a bad shape here. And he's in bed. He needs a doctor. But he's also growing suspicious of Gitlow. Was this part of his scheme? Was this maybe part of Lou's scheme to blame him for the shooting? Is Lou really dead? What will happen? Will he ever see Mary again? Well, you got to see the end of this film to find out for yourself. Quick closing thoughts. This one wasn't bad. Although the film seemed to viscerally smell of cigarette smoke and booze. And from the reviews of the film I read, eh, they seemed largely negative. That the plot was flimsy and the film's kind of poor quality. And I can give them that. But, you know, I did like the performances of George Raft and Ava Gardner here, as well as the supporting actors. You know, there was enough of a dark atmosphere and brooding feeling to it all to really give it a nice crime noir edge, if it is a little bit faulted. And this was one of Ava Gardner's very first substantial roles. And it's the first film I've ever reviewed with her on my channel. And she does have an amazing screen presence. Now, she was a gorgeous actress, but opposite George Raft, don't get me wrong, he's an amazing actor, but he's also about 20 years her senior here. So the romantic scenes aren't completely convincing and the flashback in the film where they go even further back to a younger age is kind of hard to believe but to his credit here he's got that edgy sinister character to him that really works well in a crime film like this one you know it's not perfect but i enjoyed it and again a note about victor mclaglin he was very notable in this role here i just he fits in a crime film you know he's got that big burly criminal looking face. <laughs> I caught him in Gunga Dean and he's got those the features and that gravelly voice really does a great job here as Kenny's friend. And in trying to do a little bit of research, I could not find much trivia about this film on Internet Movie Database or on Turner. I have one book on old crime noir films I was reading and it had a brief mention of this that it's an effective noir for the first two thirds and then turns into a quote cinematic wild goose chase. I'll give him that. It was directed by Leonide Magui, and I'm not sure if this one is in the public domain or not, but as of November 2021, it is streaming on Amazon Prime if you want to check it out. That's Whistleblower from 1946. It was an enjoyable crime noir film. It's worth checking out.